पुराने जमाने के टीचिंग के तरीकों से हमको क्यों पढ़ाते हैं इट्स सो बोरिंग अब भी दांतू देगा प्रॉब्लम से छुटकारा आएगा तो मजा आएगा मजा आएगा तो समझ आएगा बेस्ट टीचर्स बनाए तो सिंपल लगे समझ आएगा तो मजा आएगा मजा आएगा तो वेदांतु लर्न लाइव ऑनलाइन टू अटेंड अ फ्री लाइव क्लास डाउनलोड दी एप नाउ Hey guys, welcome to Vedantu's J channel. Well, if you are a guy who is preparing for J and is going to appear for J in the coming year 2020, then guys, this particular video could be immensely helpful for you to constructively work on various mistakes which we end up making over the period of last one month or even the time when we are just about to appear for J. and if you are a guy who's going to appear for j in the subsequent coming years then also this video could be very helpful for you in order to keep all the possible mistakes which you may make especially the psychological one and you start working in advance already so that you are not making those mistakes in future okay so this is something which is coming from my own experience when i was a student i was preparing for j and that's why the name of the video says the five mistakes slash corrections of my life especially during the preparation of j so what are the mistakes which i realized and i corrected it on time so that i ended up getting into iit okay guys well for all of you who do not know me this is me yasuri sir also known as mogambo i am an alumnus of iit bombay and i am going to share my experience with you all especially the mistakes which i used to make and then eventually corrected in order to get into iits Okay guys so let's go ahead and talk about the very first point here well what you see it on the screen is the very first mistake which we most of the people in fact end up making what does it say it says that i need to solve at least five different books to crack j i'm sure that you must be fascinated by many books which are there in the market especially say with respect to physics if i have to give you the example yes there is hc verma there is resnik heliday there is erodov there is bm sharma there are so many books which are available in the market and we all get fascinated by all those books especially the problems and the theory which is there every now and then but guys if i have to tell you what is that mantra the first mantra that we should take in mind is that cracking j is not about solving 5 or 10 books solving them once rather the success lies in solving just one book 5 or even more than that time yes i'm not kidding here instead of solving n number of books and just going through them once what is more important is that you stick to a book and solve the questions which are there in it as many times as you can reason being if you will pick any five books which are available in the market compare them chapter by chapter you will find at least 70 to 80 percent of the problems almost being common and needless to say that the concepts which they all are following are the same which are based upon the 11th and 12th standard of j yes so that's why what is important for you to keep in mind is that you don't have to run after the thickness of the book you don't have to run after n number of books just focus on a single good book yes the one which is recommended by your teachers stick to that book complete that at least once and then revise it at least the second or third time once you are done solving all of that then go to solving as many papers as you can okay instead of jumping to books for different different chapters better is to discuss and solve a single book okay guys so that's the very first point which should be there in your mind when you are now about to appear for je or you are preparing for je for future okay next point says that i need to master all the chapters to qualify for iits ho sakta hai ye dimag mein aane wala ek dusra point ho sakta hai yes or no it may happen that as a student we went into an examination in our past and we may go in exam like j with the thought that i need to master all the chapters to get into iits well yes in an ideal world yes you need to know everything which is there in the syllabus but how many of us are practically able to have the same level of intensity of understanding of all the chapters which are there in all three subjects you know that practically that is not going to be the case with all the subjects all the chapters but 
to get into IITs, the mantra is, you don't need to actually know everything 100%. But whatever you know, you need to know that 100% is more important. For example, say if I divide physics into five major units, first one is mechanics, second one is thermodynamics, third one is electrodynamics, fourth one is optics, and fifth one is modern physics. So instead of saying that I need to master all these five units, I need to say this rather, that you need to be very, very, very good at three or four of these units and be 100% in those units so that if any of the question comes from these units, you will not be missing out on that question. You'll be solving it. You'll be getting the answer correctly. And then your chances of getting into IITs will become much, much more in comparison to you knowing all the five units, only 60 or 70%. Are you getting my point? You don't want to take that risk of getting a question in the examination from the remaining percentage of the part, which you could not master. You want to master lesser, but you want to master that lesser part 100%. And that is what is very, very key essential way of preparing for any subject, any chapter that you're studying. Okay, guys. What's the next mistake I used to make? Yes, I thought that I need to attempt all the questions in the examination to get into the top 10,000 ranks of JE. You know guys, especially when we are the students who have prepared for 10 standard board examination, that's the very first official examination that we appear for. We always go in a board examination with a mindset that I need to solve all the questions and I want to get into the 90% plus bracket. Yes, that thought process is right for the board examination. But when it comes to JE, you know that JE is a examination which has your rank, which is related to everyone else's rank. Means what? It's a relative graded examination. So if you want to be in the top 10,000 students, you don't actually need to attempt all the questions. Practically you do. But if you want to do all those questions, but knowing that you may make mistakes in a particular chapter in a particular subject it's more important for you to avoid those negative markings as i told you unlike board examination j exam is full of negative marking so if related to the second point that i discussed if you are master of say out of five four units then that fifth unit is basically the one which may bring you negative marking so if a question comes from that part which you are not very strong about, it's okay to leave that question. Because if you do not leave that question and go after attempting that question, and eventually if you end up scoring minus one, then it's actually a loss for you. You may be thinking I'll be getting plus four, but you end up scoring minus one. So what is important guys is to actually focus on the part which is your strength and realizing what is the requirement in J to crack that examination. You should know that for a very long period of time, the cutoff of J main examination has been less than 120 marks, especially for the last five to seven years. If you'll go and check, you'll find out that more than 120 marks actually gets you in the safer zone of the top two lakh students to qualify from J main to J advanced. And if I speak about J advanced also, in J Advance, if you do an analysis, which is already though available on the internet, you'll find that to qualify and come into the top 10,000 to top 15,000 students who eventually will be called for the counselings by IIT, you don't need to score more than 40% marks. Okay. Now, when I say you don't need to, that doesn't mean you should not. You should try to get as much as you can, but not on the cost of getting negative marks. If you are getting the question, if you're confident about it, yes go after the solving entire paper. But remember, if you are not very confident about a particular part, particular chapter, particular subject, I don't want you people to make the mistake of attempting it, thinking that I need to solve all the questions. You need to solve only those questions, which are basically your strength and the one where you can put efforts and get the answer into keeping back of the mind the thought that I need to get into a score which is respectable enough for me to get into ITs. Yeah, so instead of keeping 300 as your score in the mind, I would rather say keep it 200 in your mind first. In fact, 150 in the beginning is even more interestingly easy and very important for you to keep in mind. When you are going and appearing for the examination, in the first one hour, the thought should be to qualify rather than getting the rank. And to qualify, keep the number in mind, 120 plus. 
the first target is 120 plus core. After that, start working on the part which will take you from 120 to 170, then 170 to 200 and then further beyond 200. I hope that you got the point here. Yeah. What about the next one? Well, yes, this one says that if my theory is strong, then I have a better understanding of subject. Obviously, you are not wrong if you are thinking like that. We all think that to master a subject, we need to be very good at theory. And I also used to think like that. But guys, if I'm only and only focusing on the theory of a given subject, then my chances of cracking examination questions reduce drastically. Reason, as you already know, J is not an examination which is checking your theory and your derivation skills. Rather, it is the examination which is based upon the application of the concepts that you learn. So what is more important than learning theory or rather which could increase your chances even further is that you practice questions as many as you can. Especially if you are a guy who's going to appear for J in 2020. Now you must be running towards that time when you are having only a very limited amount of time for you to just appear for that examination. In this phase, I don't want and I don't recommend you guys to just sit with a book, turn the pages to revise the theory. Not the best thing to do at the moment. What is the best thing to do at the moment is pick previous year questions starting from 2019 and go in the back order, solve at least two papers every day. Because when you solve questions, you actually apply the theory that you learned. And not only just that, you get to see what type of questions have come in the previous year examinations of JE. And if you are lucky, which happens with most of the students, if you have solved say previous 10 years of paper of JE, there are high chances that you will be getting many questions from those previous 10 years in the examination of the day you are appearing for JE. So it has a dual advantage for you. Okay, guys, so not just the theory, very important is to solve questions, especially the one which have come in the previous year examinations. Okay, now the last one, and I would rather say the most important one because this comes into existence on the day at the time of the examination when you are in the examination hall. What does it say? It says the 50-50 approach and beyond that, what is written is the Murphy's Law. I don't know whether you know this or not. If you Google it, you'll find the meaning of Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law states that anything which is supposed to go wrong will definitely go wrong. And what it connects to is the point which is written below, the 50-50 approach. Tell me guys, has this happened with you during your mock examinations that when you are looking at a question, especially the one which you are not very confident with, happens many times that out of four options, you are able to rule out two options. But the remaining two are the one where you are actually not 100% sure about. You think that one of these two is surely the answer. If you are a guy who end up answering that question by taking a guess, then just close your eyes, think about the number of times you have done that and what has been the outcome of that. I'm sure that 90% plus times you must have ended up getting minus one instead of plus four. Yes, that's why I'm calling it a 50-50 approach because in the case of doubt between two options, this is when this comes into existence, we end up getting tempted. And the mantra to overcome this resistance is basically to have a control over this temptation. Again, coming back to the first point or the second point where I said that your 100% understanding of limited number of concepts is more important than your 60 or 70% understanding over a entire subject. Because if you are 100% sure about a given chapter, you will not ever be in this situation of having a doubt about two options from that question. But if you are half prepared for every chapter, then the chances of this happening with you increases. So what exactly is the mantra whenever you are looking at a question? I don't want you to go for that question where you are not 100% sure. Because if we think that, say there are 10 such questions which I will end up answering in this case where I'm not 100% sure about and thinking that out of 10, maybe five I'll do right, so five into four will give me 20 marks and remaining five will be wrong. So I'll be getting effectively 15 marks out of it. But then 
practically what happens as per the Murphy's law, what is supposed to go wrong will go wrong. You will end up getting plus four only for a single question or two out of those 10. That means what? You may end up scoring plus four marks and minus nine, which means what? You effectively earn minus five marks and the time that you have wasted in that. And even if say you score two questions correctly, you get eight marks out of that and you solve the remaining eight incorrectly, making your score effectively zero in those 10 questions. And also you end up losing a very, very, very precious amount of time in that examination. Okay, guys. So what is important right now? This is very close to the day of examination. As I recommended, solve at least two papers every day. If you're solving two papers doing mock test every day for two such papers, always be a judge of yourself that whenever you are in this situation, whenever you are feeling tempted about a question which has two such options out of which you are sure one of them is correct, try for a change not to answer that question. And then finally do the analysis that what is your average score which has been so far till date and what eventually comes out to be your score. I'm sure 90% plus times you will end up scoring more than your average score. Okay, guys. So I hope you got the point here. Very important point, especially with respect to the day of examination. Okay. I hope the five mistakes that I used to do at my time, I don't want you people to commit those mistakes. Learn from the mistakes that I have corrected at the right time. I want you people to do that, those corrections at the right time. And that time starts right now, I would rather say. Doesn't matter whether you're appearing for a, the JE examination the coming month or in the month of April 2020, or you are going to appear for JE maybe in 2021 or later on. What is important is to look at your mistakes and correct them on time. Okay, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have liked the video, then guys, you know that like, share and subscribe. Just like the video. If you found it helpful, tell your friends, share with them. And if you have not, subscribe to this channel. I'll be back again with many such videos to help you guys out with exams like JE. Till then, keep watching and keep studying. And don't forget to enjoy studying physics, chemistry and maths. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. All the best for JE.